Hey, welcome to the Pleasure Points Podcast. I am your host, James Rohr, and this might be the episode that you have been waiting your entire life for. Today, we're talking about sex. I can't have a podcast about pleasure and not talk about sex. So in this episode, we're going to be laying the foundation for what Chinese medicine has to say about sex, how the Taoists used to view sex as a pathway for enlightenment, and really just to have a much better time there. So it's really, you know, for guys, you've got some extra responsibility. For the ladies, this is all about you softening and deepening your pleasure so that hopefully everybody can come together, regardless of what your gender is, and we can all fuck and laugh and have a good time. So let me know what you think of this podcast. Let me know if you've tried any of this before or if you implement some of the suggestions that I throw out there. Let me know what you think. How does it go for you? How big was your smile all day? How much fun have you been having? I can't wait to hear those stories. So without further ado, let's cue the music and welcome to the show. So really the purpose of this talk today is going to be to teach you how to live forever and so that you can have great sex the entire time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm also kind of not joking because in Chinese medicine, they very much recognize the link between appropriate sex, good sex, healthy sex as a tool to like reinvigorate yourself. And so one of my favorite books is this book called The Tao of Health, Sex and Longevity. And then there, the author has this great line where he says, you know, for the Taoist, the issue of sexual intercourse in old age is not a moral or a social one. It's a matter of life and health. So when you're having good sex, when you are following the principles that uh, that I'll share with you that, that have been gleaned from the Taoist and these old sexual traditions for a long time, when you engage in this way, it really does become a major tool of self-care a way to invigorate yourself, a way to feel energized. And then, of course, obviously, a way to connect with your partner as well. And we know that those bonds of connection, of closeness, lead to better health in the long runs. Even, you know, modern uh, psychologists and researchers have identified that loneliness is one of the uh, biggest risk factors for early mortality. And so it would um, fall right in line with what the Chinese medicine and um, these ancient sexual practices have taught, which is that having good sex and being connected to somebody is a way to feel invigorated, to feel connected. And when those feelings are there, it's so much easier for good health to follow. All right. So what I want to do here, let me just set this up for you. So what I want to do here is we're going to take a look. We're going to revisit this idea of chi. I know I did a whole podcast on it at the very beginning about chi and energy. And um, we're going to take a look at how you can, like what chi is, and then how you can use sex as a way to cultivate and strengthen that chi. And also to see how bad sex can even lead to greater levels of exhaustion. So in some cases, even no sex is going to be healthier for you than bad sex. And we'll talk about what bad sex uh, really means in this Taoist and Chinese medicine tradition. So Okay, so when we're looking at the basics of understanding how this works is we have this idea of the yin and the yang, a chi, and then there's this even more necessary concept of essence. And so when we're talking about yin, this is going to be things that are like cold and resting, quiet, typically more feminine, um, tranquil. This is like inward. You can think about like the moon, right? This whole idea of yin is like very resting and relaxing. The opposite of that is going to be the yang. This is going to be energizing, invigorating. The character means the sunny side of the slope. This is like hot. It's moving. It's upward. It's stimulating. It's expanding. This is typically going to be the male side of things. And what happens is that when the yin and the yang transform into each other and you get this nice, beautiful interplay between the yin and the yang, The byproduct of that is chi, which is your energy. So chi can be described as that which animates life. It's this invisible force that you know when it's there and you certainly know when it's not there, right? Those days you can just think about yourself, those days that you feel exhausted. It's like, wow, my energy has just left me. And those days that you feel really good, it's like, oh, I feel full. I feel abundant. I have this chi, this life force that's flowing through me. And so that we say that when people are in good health, 
they have an abundant amount of chi and the chi flows freely. And when people are not feeling well, they don't have a lot of chi and the chi that they do have might be easily blocked. So when we look at where does chi come from, there's basically two main sources. So there's what you're born with. This is like this, you can call it sort of like an energetic trust fund. This is a lot to do with, you know, where you were conceived, how you were conceived, what your parents' energy is like. You could sort of think about it like your DNA or your kind of genetic constitution, but it's a little more nuanced in Chinese medicine. And then there's the post heaven chi. And this is going to come from everything that happens after you're born. This is like, how are you living in your daily life? These are the deposits that you make that you get, you know, from the chi based on earning a good, a good way. So you're, you know, a moderate lifestyle, you're eating well, you're exercising, all of these things are going to contribute to this post heaven chi. And so now we're going to get into this idea of essence, this jing, and this is really the backbone of understanding why the, like where this, the sexual practice recommendations are going to be coming from and how this is relevant to your health and longevity and wellness. So Chinese medicine has this phenomenal concept that refers to as jing or essence. And the amount of essence that you have is really going to govern your sexual vigor and your aging process. Now, Jing is a little nuanced because it has prenatal and postnatal sources. So where the, the, you know, part of it is going to be imbued by your parents, your kind of genetic constitution, your overall vitality there, and also how you're living after you're born. So Jing in this essence has two kind of inputs to it. The prenatal stuff is going to be fixed really at birth. There's not much you can do about the prenatal stuff. But this postnatal jing, this postnatal essence has a lot to do with food and your environment and obviously how you're living. And so why is this important? Well, because this particular type of chi, this jing, this essence, governs your development. And so the amount of energy that you have over time has a lot to do with your essence. And when somebody has a lot of essence, they say that uh, they're able to have deeper awareness of the self and of life. It leads to a good amount of wisdom. And if somebody is deficient in this essence, it's going to lead to a low libido. It can lead to infertility. Certainly, it leads to this great phrase of called ungraceful aging and can generally lead to just kind of this lack of wisdom. There's a, there's a lack of depth that's happening there when there isn't enough jing. So when we look at how do you manifest more jing, well, there's two main ways. Qigong, the practice of Qigong, it's similar to Tai Chi, is one of them. And then following these Taoist sexual practices, or what we'd call sort of the Tao of loving, are some of the biggest contributors to this postnatal Qi and as a direct approach to cultivate more of this kind of essence. Now, if you listen to um, acupuncturists talk about jing and essence and good sexual practices, you may hear us talk about referring to the kidneys. So the kidneys are where this essence of store. The kidneys are said to be this root of life. And the kidneys, now this isn't your like your idea of Western medicine kidneys. This is like an energetic concept. As you get older, the kidney energy is going to decline in age. And so of utmost importance to your acupuncturist and to the Chinese medicine scholars is preserving the energy and the essence in the kidneys to ensure that longer life, the healthier aging, reproductive abilities, and stamina. And so the name of this podcast, this Gate of Vitality podcast, it comes from a point that is very near the kidneys. It's in between the, where the kidneys are. And by accessing this gate of life, what we're talking about is tapping into the kidneys, tapping into this jing, this essence, this accessing this vitality. And so what happens when the kidneys, if the kidneys get imbalanced, if the chi in the kidney starts to decline, we'll see a lot of sexual dysfunction. So things like erectile dysfunction, low libido, poor reproductive health, all of that can be related to this decline in the kidney chi. And really when we're looking at like fertility treatments and that sort of thing, sexuality and reproduction really depend on that healthy essence and the balance of the kidneys yin and yang. 
And so all sexual dysfunction in a Chinese, in the eyes of a Chinese medicine practitioner. So we're talking about like even painful intercourse, diminished libido, exaggerated libido, premature ejaculation, lack of orgasm, sexual dryness, all of these things in some way, shape or form are going to be related to the kidneys and in particular the kidney jing or the kidney essence. So another way that you might think about it, and I'm going to say this like very kind of like loosely here, is that when we think about when a Chinese medicine practitioner is talking about the kidneys, you might think about it like your hormones. So as you get older, the hormones change, hormones go in decline. So there seems to be some overlap. I don't really like um, making those direct one-to-one comparisons because it's they're different, right? The concepts were different. The ancient Taoists didn't have a concept of, of estrogen. They weren't talking about testosterone. But when we are in it functionally and working with these energies, do we see that hormones balance? Do we think that uh, this following the Taoist sexual practices can activate some testosterone? Absolutely. So loosely, you can think about it as your hormones. So what's going to happen when you have sex? Well, when you're having sex, you're going to get a testosterone production and you're going to see an increase in in estrogen as well. And so during intercourse, these sexual hormones are generated and to a certain amount, a small amount of those hormones are going to be exchanged. Now, women are also able to generate sex hormones during menstruation and during pregnancy. But for a man, sexual activity is really critical to increase testosterone production. We'll see it with working in certain types of exercise can also increase testosterone. But one of the things that is um, more readily available to men and that is the most effective is gonna be sexual activity. And But it requires that you utilize this sexual activity in a, in a good way. And so why can't guys especially be indiscriminate in their sexual approach? Well, there's this great quote from this guy, Ko Hung. I probably totally butchered that name. He was a Taoist alchemist. And he's got this line that says, if a man knows the Tao, then the more he makes love, the better becomes his health. If he's ignorant of the Tao, just one woman is sufficient to hasten his journey to the grave. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that. And so some of my other favorite quotes um, to kind of give us some perspective here as we launch into what the actual practice looks like is uh, you see that you know, the cultural influences have so much to do on our sexual um, tendencies and our sexual mindset on what we think is right and wrong and good and bad. And so sexuality really is a basic and fundamental force of life to the East Asian physician. And so we aren't, you know, I, I certainly don't, and, and my colleagues and stuff who study these things, you know, we're not drawing distinctions between like sacred and profane sex. Really what we're focusing on is good or bad technique. <laughs> and this is cr- absolutely critical because when you're following the Taoist sexual practices, when you're approaching sex in a good way, you're going to be able to balance your body's energy so you can absorb some of your partner's energy and you can use that to strengthen yours. You can give some of your energy just to help them feel strengthened. We're going to see a stimulation and hormone production. And really what we're talking about is increasing your overall vitality by preserving and cultivating that Jing essence chi. And so sexuality really is this like basic and fundamental force of life. It's absolutely critical, critical, critical. And now when we look at Taoism, this guy Kenneth Cohen has a great book, and he says this this amazing quote where he says, you know, Taoism is one of the world's only major religions in which food and sex are considered important paths to enlightenment. Taoism is one of the world's only major religions in which food and sex are considered important paths to enlightenment. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking when you approach sex from this mindset of like increasing your vitality, increasing your life force, increasing your chi, increasing your ability to be in that present moment then it's no longer just about trying to get off. It's no longer just about looking for a release or stress reduction, though that's totally fine too. But ultimately, this particular practice of the Tao of loving, these Taoist sexual practices, are about being as present and as possible during every phase of lovemaking in order to cultivate chi and health. 
not to mention an amazing connection with your partner. So what are these guidelines? What are these Taoist, Tao of sex principles? What are the, the actual in the bed, in between the sheets rules to follow? What are the suggestions here? Number one is to be incredibly attentive. Putting your awareness into your hands, into your partner, allowing yourself to be totally enmeshed and engrossed in each of the little movements and connections and subtleties of your partner. Enjoying you know, the way that he or she smells and the way they feel, the way they taste. Really giving yourself that time to explore each other. And so this kind of approach is going to require some time. If you're blocking an hour, an hour and a half for a yoga class, why wouldn't you block an hour, hour and a half to have sex with your partner, to have that kind of connection? If you're taking time to go get massages, if you're taking time to get your pedicures, you're taking your time to do these other self-care rituals, why would you only block 10 minutes to have sex at the end of the day when everybody's exhausted? So kind of rule number one is you want to make it a priority. Put it in your calendar. It'll be the best appointment that you have all week. (laughs) And so by being attentive is absolutely critical. Giving yourself plenty of time for the warm-up. Right, So it's been um, suggested that it takes a woman anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes of foreplay to be adequately stimulated in order to be ready for any kind of penetration or intercourse. So you've got to take your time making eye contact, incorporating lots of breast play, you know, using your hands to massage your partner, asking her what is it that she likes. You know, don't be afraid to, to ask for information, to ask her to guide you on what is it that you need, right? And ladies, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, obviously do it like in a good way or you guys are just looking to have the best time possible, but you have to be willing to share with your partner what it is that you like. And you also have to be willing to relax a little bit. So we're talking about attention here. And in the course of sex, they talk about oftentimes a thousand loving thrusts is the, is the quote there. 1,000 loving thrusts. So for dudes, you get the, the sense you got to pace yourself, right? This is a marathon. This is going to be an enjoyment here. You don't have to just go to town like a, like a jackhammer. You're going to take your time and explore your partner with a thousand loving thrusts. The Tao of sex also suggests that you have absolutely as much sex as you possibly can. <laughs> so find a partner that you like. <laughs> or if you're if you're not into the monogamy thing, you know, lots of different partners. So have as much sex as possible. But for dudes, this is the key thing here. You have to regulate how much you ejaculate. So I'm making a distinction here between how much sex you're having and how often you're ejaculating. Just because you're having sex doesn't mean that you should be ejaculating all the time. So what happens here? Let's break this down with the ejaculation. So with orgasm, a dude is going to say to eject his essence, right? You're scattering your seed all over the place. And over time, what the Chinese medicine, these Taoists have noticed is that excessive ejaculation can lead to weakness because you can think about your semen as the visible, the tangible aspect of your jing, of this essence. And so if you are scattering your seed indiscriminately all over the place, you're going to lead to weakness. It has the potential of really leading to this stability and weakness over time. And so with a, when a male has an orgasm, when he ejaculates, they'll say things like he lost his essence, right? Or that he surrendered. And I believe that even the French have this saying of, of ejaculation that he says, uh, you know, he died a little death. <laughs> and so there's this other quote from this guy. I can't even attempt to pronounce his name, uh, but it comes from this, this book, The Secrets of the Jade Bedroom. And it says that in sexual intercourse, semen must be regarded as a most precious substance. And by saving it, a man protects his very life. Now, this could be a radical, radical concept. If you've never heard about it, if you've never practiced it, it can be kind of overwhelming to think about. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is to preserve your jing, to preserve that essence. By retaining your ejaculation, you're allowing that chi to recirculate through the body. 
you know, I'm going to have to bring somebody on here um, as it, for an interview to talk more about, you know, some of the tantric sexual practices. We can talk about more about like the internal um, ejaculation, that injaculation, that internal orgasm that can happen. But what's going to happen here is that if you preserve your semen by preserving the sex hormones, hormones by withholding that ejaculation, you're going to be able to reabsorb that hormone. And so they're going to, the, the thinking is that some of that may be actually re-entering your bloodstream. And the Chinese will talk about, you know, preventing hair loss, arthritis, rheumatism, and impotence. You know, is it that the hormone is actually absorbed or reabsorbed through the bloodstream? I don't know. I haven't seen any studies on that. But certainly from the conceptual standpoint of the qi, it will will experience that. And functionally, this is very much the case with men who have followed this practice. Uh, this, this woman or this person, Pian Chang, says, the art of the bedroom consists of suppressing emissions, absorbing the woman's fluids, and making the semen return to strengthening the brain, thereby attaining longevity. So how often should you be ejaculating? Well, Again, let's make that distinction that ejaculation frequency is just not the same as the frequency of lovemaking. It's suggested that you make love daily, if not twice a day. And for women, it's a little bit different here. So for women, frequent intercourse with orgasm is absolutely the best. And for men, frequent intercourse without ejaculation is best. So if you can cultivate uh, an internal orgasm for dudes, then that's fantastic. But for women, you're going to want to, the suggestion is to have a lot of sex, but it's got to be satisfying sex. If you're just having a lot of sex and it's totally unsatisfying, then there's work to be done there as well. And the more that a woman can release, the more that she can have frequent orgasms, it's fantastic because unless you're like, unless you're squirting, which should, I don't think is happening all the time, you're going to be able to have this orgasm. There's going to be a surge of some fluid, but you're going to be able to retain those fluids. Your body can reabsorb that fluid. So you can, um, a woman having an orgasm or even frequent orgasms isn't as debilitating at all. In fact, it, it helps to move any kind of stagnant chi that might be happening in that lower dantian or the root chakra, the second chakra area. And so it's a great way to cleanse and to move that energy and to become a base of your vitality, increasing and strengthening your energy there. But for guys, because we're, the ejaculation is outside of the body, then that becomes that, that overall loss of your, of your chi. So there's this guy, Master Sun. He said that he said he was born in AD 581 and that he lived to be 101 years. And he had these recommended ejaculation intervals. I love these. Uh, he said that if you're 20 years old, you can have one ejaculation every four days. If you're 30 years old, you can have one ejaculation every eight days. If you're 40 years old, one ejaculation every 10 days. If you're 50 years old, one ejaculation every 20 days. And if you're 60 years old, you can have one ejaculation every month, only if you're healthy. <laughs> now, what's interesting is that with modern medicine, when they look at prostate health, they're going to suggest much more frequent ejaculation as a way of cleansing and moving that energy through the prostate. Um, but Master Sun apparently wasn't too worried about all that. He was uh, rocking and rolling through his hundred years of life, and apparently he was retaining his ejaculation more often than not. Now, in general, the more ejaculation frequency, you can base it on your age. So we're going to say, obviously, you can do more while you're younger and less as you get older. And then there's also a recommendation based on the season. So you're going to, you can have it more frequently in the spring and the summer where it's typically a more young, energizing time. And they're going to suggest ejaculating less in the fall and winter when it's typically a more yin dominant time. But here is what I think is absolutely the key. So my main recommendation is that you observe how you feel after you ejaculate. So after you ejaculate, you should be feeling invigorated and happy. And you shouldn't feel that tired and weakness. So that letdown that happens after you ejaculate, 
that in the eyes of a Chinese medicine practitioner is going to be an indication that you didn't have enough jing, you didn't have enough essence, you didn't have enough chi or life force to justify that ejaculation. And so you're sort of paying the energetic price there and the amount of exhaustion that you have afterwards. I mean, unless you were having like completely aerobic sex, <laughs> that kind of fatigue that you have afterwards is an indication that that you spread your seed indiscriminately, that you would have been better off withholding the ejaculation there. Now, what I'm going to suggest is that you, you want to have a conversation with your partner. So talk to your partner about what you're doing here and go into it together so that you know exactly what's happening. And that when you start to do these practices, the recommendation that I have is that, you know, maybe you go into it and you guys have sex in the morning. And for the dude, you're going to go into it knowing that you're not going to be ejaculating in the morning. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to go there and you guys are going to start having sex. You're going to enjoy the foreplay, do the whole thing. You can like count your thousand loving thrusts, play with it, allow your penis to explore her vagina where you've got like, you know, you do shallow thrusts and deeper thrusts. You find out what she likes, what she doesn't like, what, you know, gets her excited, what doesn't get her excited. And you take your time. And you know that you're not going to be ejaculating. And what happens is that when you're no longer racing to get to a finish, when you're no longer hurrying to this like conclusion of your own ejaculation, the entire sexual encounter becomes totally different. You can spend more time easily in foreplay because it, what's, it's all the same to you, right? You're going to get an erection. You're going to enjoy yourself, but it's, you're, there's no race to the finish line. Don't even be so concerned about her having an orgasm, right? This is part of her responsibility to do that as well. You guys are in this together. Explore her body. Spend a bunch of time like with nipple play or kissing or making out or, you know, maybe give her some massage and, you know, like really enjoy the buildup for that, especially in the, in the morning time, right? And so enjoy being aroused, enjoy that sexual contact, enjoy the, uh, that experience. And then guys, you know, don't approach that point of no return. You want to pace yourselves, but don't ejaculate in the morning. And then notice how you feel all day long, right? This idea, this, the fear of blue balls, like it just doesn't really happen. Sometimes there can be a little bit of discomfort in the beginning, but, you know, you can think about like you can do some deep breathing exercises. You can think about recirculating that energy through your body and, you know, take heart knowing that you're going to have sex later in the day. And that's, you know, when, as you guys start to do this, come to an agreement. Be like, hey, OK, like, you know, let's practice this this Taoist sexual practice in the morning. And then, you know, let's have have sex again in the afternoon or in the evening so that you can get your release um, and you can start playing with that energy. And typically what mine will find and certainly what I found when I started doing this is there's like a vitality. There's this life force that flows through you all day long, right? It feels like you just had this great workout. You get that, you know, it, maybe it's that surge of testosterone that happens. And your energy builds and builds and you'll feel like powerful and invigorated. Decisions can become easier. If you're doing this on a day off, right, you'll, you might be like um, lusting after your woman and giving her more attention, being more patient, right? And all of that is going to lead to a healthier and happier relationship. And then when you have sex in the afternoon or the evening, you can, you know, enjoy again, still follow the same things where you're enjoying the foreplay, connecting with your partner, making, you know, great eye contact and enjoying that whole thing. And you get to know that you're going to have that release. And so you can ejaculate and then notice how you feel. And my guess is, is that when you do that, the amount of fatigue that you would feel after a normal ejaculation is going to be less. Because you've built up to it all day. You've allowed that essence to recirculate. You're like coming in with this extra kind of power and vitality and vigor. And so that then when you do ejaculate, you'll feel still really invigorated. You might even have more energy afterwards because you've been allowing this energy to circulate through your body the entire time. But, you know, part of this practice is going to ask that you pace yourself. So you don't want to get too excited. You don't want to be like overly passionate in the beginning. You know, you want to pace yourself, allow yourself to, you know, connect with her yin energies. And now, ladies, this might sound like super exciting to you. But remember, you also have some responsibility here. So if your partner tends to, you know, ejaculate really easily, if he's like a you know, a quick, uh, he's got a quick trigger, then you, you know, take it upon yourself to help pace him. 
have the conversations where you're talking about what it is that you want to be doing together. You know, you can even read like some tantric sex books together, you know, and include him in that process. But also, you know, you can help him to pace yourself. Let him know what it is that you like. You might have to be a lot more verbal. You might have to demonstrate more of what it is that you want. You might have to take you take that risk to communicate with him about how you like to be touched, what gets you really excited. You might have to take a little more initiative to set the mood. You know, if you dim the lights, light the candles, get the music going, get your aromatherapy on, you know, and all of that stuff. Don't just, you know, let him dictate all of the terms. You can also create that space in that environment where you thrive. Now, the key thing here also for women is to be able to have more orgasms and to orgasm more freely. So if that's something that has been a struggle for you in the past, then that's something that we're, we, you know, you're going to have to put some time and energy into it. You know, self-play is great to explore your body. It's hard to give a man that you're with the, the kind of, or your partner, the keys to your kingdom if you don't even know what the keys to your kingdom are. So take time to get to know yourself. There's all sorts of, you know, jade egg practices. There's, you know, there's this like real resurgence, resurgence of these like tantric sexual practices, these Taoist sexual practices. I'm going to see about bringing some other experts in here because I, I, I can't have a podcast where we're talking about vitality and not be talking about sex because that's the point, right? What's the point of living a long time if you can't have sex, if you're not having that connection, if you don't get that, that expression of yourself, if you're not tapping into that creative energy, then it's like you're not living, a, a, I don't think we're living a life that is, to its fullest without that. So, you know, for ladies, take the time to explore yourself, tap into your feminine divine, you know, do some of that goddess work, experiment with the jade eggs, get to know yourself and then bring your partner into that conversation as well. And together you guys can go in and go forth and go out and into exploring each other and cultivating that chi, getting that freedom of expression. Now, especially for guys, if you are single, if you have lots of partners and you want to do this, make sure you give the ladies or your partners a heads up that this is what you're doing. Because otherwise, if you don't have an ejaculation, they may feel like they didn't please you, that you didn't like them, that you were turned off. So just give them a heads up. Be like, hey, this is what I like to do. It helps me to feel really good. I feel really invigorated and energized. It's not you know, anything to do with you. Like I'm with you because I find you to be totally sexy and attractive and I'm having a really good time. But it's just going to help me to feel good. And trust me, like, you know, you'll be getting a lot more attention from me and everyone's going to win in, the, in, in this approach. But just give them a heads up beforehand so that they're not feeling, you know, totally inadequate. Now, there's um, one of I want to I love this quote, too. So there's this quote that says uh, the beginner should start with a woman who is not too attractive and whose jade gate is not too tight. With such a woman, it's easier for him to learn to control himself. So you get a sense that even in these old practices, when they were educating young men on the ways of the, the Tao of loving, you know, the pacing themselves was of utmost importance, taking good time to get to know your partner and to pace yourself, do some deep breathing. You can breathe into your balls, you know, move that energy, start circulating that chi. And, you know, really shifting your focus from just getting to that point of ejaculation to enjoying that entire process. So you want to be reevaluating how you view sex and especially ejaculation for men, right? And the ancients believe that ejaculation is not the most ecstatic moment for a man. But you can have this orgasm, this internal orgasm. So part of how that works is you can do some deep breathing, especially as you approach that point of no return. Slow down, pull out if you have to take a couple of deep breaths and imagine that energy instead of it being like in the shaft of the penis or in the tip of the penis, you pull it back inside of your body and allow it to recirculate. You might get tingles, you might get chills, you might start laughing, maybe you'll even start crying. You might have like a shudder, you know, you can have this sort of like whole body feeling that is like very, very different than a typical ejaculation. And then you're going to have to find the right interval of ejaculation that suits you for your age and your physical condition. So if you've been dealing with chronic health conditions, if you've been dealing with ongoing frustrations or weakness, you know, if you've had stuff like with Lyme disease or mono, any of that stuff that, that leads to weakness and fatigue, then you're going to want to pace the amount of times that you ejaculate even further. But be also like by all means, have as much sex as you possibly can. 
just don't ejaculate because by getting that connection with your partner, by getting an erection, allowing your testosterone to be built up and circulating through the body, it's going to lead to better um, strength and stamina and endurance. And then of course, you know, we have to remember the third part that's critical in this, which is the importance of female satisfaction. So ladies, that responsibility also falls on you. It's not just your partner. In fact, the majority of it, I would say is on you. And then, you know, your partner obviously has, has a part of that to play as well, but make sure that you know what it's like for you to be satisfied, get sense of what it is that turns you on and what you like, and then be sure to share that with your partner. So part of what happens here is this like reawakening of the senses. And this is something that I get really passionate about because what the fuck is the point of being alive if your like senses are totally dead all of the time? So bringing that awareness back into the moment, dropping that like rush to the ending. And even for ladies, you know, the orgasm is important, but, you know, not putting too much pressure on that for yourself, allowing things to flow. So you've got like sex here, which is like a microcosm of you know, I think a good way to be living in the rest of the life, which is to be less concerned about uh, some of, you know, what's going to happen at the end and really allowing yourself to be engaged in an enlivened and feeling vital in the process. And so using sex as this opportunity where, you know, it might be that um, the way that you touch your partner is, you know, the feeling that comes through your hand when, you know, maybe you touch their elbow or they, kiss your neck or something that that feeling is what triggers this whole kind of like cascade of emotion or this um you know awakening of your senses or even you know possibly a transcending into some kind of form of enlightenment it might not have anything to do with an orgasm it might not have anything to do with even penetration it might be from something else that's part of that process and so as you um change your perspective and change your priority there to cultivating and going into sexual intercourse and going into sexy time with that intention of connection of increasing vitality, increasing energy, and, you know, being concerned about, you know, what is your partner like in order to feel good? What do you need in order to feel good? And doing it so that, you know, everybody is going to have this kind of emergence of light and of energy and that, that feeling of vitality, that cultivation of your jing and your essence, that natural balancing of the yin and yang between you know each of you individually and then between the couple together sex has the ability to be incredibly healing both in the present the past and you know setting up certainly a, a good connection for the future so that's uh what i've got for you today let me know what you think if you've done this before you know write in let me know how things are going if you have questions i'd love to hear those too we'll get to them next time and um, thank you so much for being here happy sexy time mm-hmm.